Bob, I finally found it. Ta-da! Hey folks, we're back again with another video, and today we're working on a Fox Float DPS Factory Series Evol Rear Shock. So this is a 2022, and it came from a subscriber. He had bought it from a pro racer, and supposedly this thing was heavily used last year, and we have no idea of the history on this thing, right? So we're going to be doing a full 200-hour service, plus the 50-hour service, in order to see the shape of this thing inside, and it might make for a good video as far as showing people out there that, you know, if you abuse shocks, use them for a long time without servicing them, well, stuff could happen inside, right? So we have no idea what to expect, but we will find out. So with that being said, let's go into the tools and parts needed for the job. As for tools, the most important tool on this table, right there, safety glasses. Wear your safety glasses. We're dealing with oil and pressures here. Don't take the chance. Rest of the tools, we're gonna to go over in order of use. So if you line them up like this, it should make your life a little bit easier. This is an optional tool to start with. Shock mounting hardware removal tool. Makes it a little bit easier to remove your shock mounting hardware, but it's not needed, okay? You will need a vise, and with the vise, you will need flat soft jaws. And for the eyelet, you will need soft jaws with a nine millimeter hole, right? So for starters, we're gonna take the shock, we're gonna put it to the flat soft jaw, we're gonna write down the existing settings. Pen and paper, pencil, who cares? We're gonna take a shock pump, write down the air, we're gonna write down the rebound, and in this shock, there is a pseudo compression setting that you might wanna write down as well, right? So from there, we're gonna remove the air can. For that, you might need a strap wrench or you might be able to do it by hand. So this is optional, again, if you can't do it by hand. Then we're gonna take out the Delrin ball. Two ways to take out the Delrin ball. One, you could use a drill with a very small drill bit in order to drill a hole and pop it out with a pick, my preferred way, or, you could use heat, which I will do in this video in order to satisfy a question that a subscriber had, right? We'll go over that later when we remove the Delrin ball with heat. So we remove the ball, 530 seconds Allen in order to remove the pellet retaining screw. We're gonna take the shock, mount it vertically then. We're gonna remove the bleed screw, 564 Allen to remove the bleed screw and underneath the bleed screw is a metal ball. We need a magnet to remove the metal ball. From there, we are going to separate the damper body from the top half of the shock, three quarter inch or 19 millimeter wrench or Nipex or pliers or channel lock, whatever you got to remove it. But when it comes to later, we need to torque it back down three quarter inch or 19 millimeter crow's foot. If you don't have a wrench, get a crow's foot. We could always remove and torque back down with a crow's foot. To me, these are more important, right? So now that a damper body separated, you're gonna need an oil pan in order to put the oil in, right? First, we're gonna work on the IFP. So we're gonna need air to remove the IFP from the damper body. Then when we clean the damper body, we're gonna put the IFP back in. Two options over here. You could use just a caliper to put it back in. I personally like Fox's IFP insertion tool. I use the caliper to make sure that the tool is correctly set, and then I use the tool to put the IP into the damper body, right? So we're gonna put that aside then. We're gonna start working on the piston. For the piston, we are gonna need these two Fox specific tools. One of them is a three nipple tool, nipples, and the other one is a thin walled 5 8 socket. If you could find them in the aftermarket, that'd be great. Ultimately, you're gonna need these two tools, right? And you're gonna need a ratchet to use those two tools. So. Before we take out the piston assembly, we wanna make sure we have either a zip tie or a tie wrap to take it all out one shot and keep it all together, okay? So next we work on the eyelet and removing the shaft from the eyelet. To remove the shaft, chances are you will need heat in order to soften up the Loctite red that's already in it holding it there, right? So then we are gonna work on the shaft and the metering rod. A little needle comes in handy to remove, or a needle in general comes in handy to remove the seals that are already in there and a skewer, if you can find one, comes in handy to insert the new seals in there, right? So again, those come in handy. Then we have the option to work on the dials. All you need for the dials is 1.5 millimeter. Again, this is totally optional. So now we're gonna start putting everything back together. Now there's gonna be a portion in the compression stack where we have the option to change out the glide ring. We're gonna get into this later. I highly recommend not changing out the glide ring unless you do, but if you do change out the glide ring, you're gonna to wanna to find a way to compress it to make sure it's tight to the piston again. Now, Fox makes their own tool to do this. 
This is a piston band sizer. We're gonna go into this tool later. Ultimately, you could use the damper body just as easily. This is gonna be a little bit more effective without a doubt, but I've been using the damper body many years. In fact, I bought this years ago and lost it, and I recently found it with a bunch of other stuff, actually. But you do not technically need this tool to get that job done. Again, it just makes it easier. So now everything's assembled. We want to test the lifting plate. This is an option. We use a dial with a Fox tool in order to test if we are within tolerances of the lifting plate when we lift it from the fully locked to the pedal position. We will get into that later, right? So from there, we fill it up with oil and then we wanna fill up the IFP chamber with air. Two options in this video, like I said, I will be using nitrogen, but you could use air with a shock pump as well. Make sure your shock pump is 500 PSI capable, high pressure shock pump. I do have a full detailed video on how to fill up the IFP chamber using a shock pump with a nitrogen needle. Uh, I highly recommend looking at that video before you attempt it. But no matter what, in either way, we are either going to need Fox's tool in order to insert the needle, whether it's, well, using a nitrogen kit or this needle over here, or you can make your own using a 530 seconds Allen key. We'll go into that later, right? We are going to need a torque wrench. You're gonna need towel and alcohol, some picks, plastic brush might come in handy for a couple of areas and that's pretty much it. If we're missing anything, I'm sure we will go into them as we're going through the job. Next up, let's go into the parts needed for the job. As for parts, we're gonna need seal kits. So the 50 hour seal kit, 803-00-142. Now, sometimes when you buy this kit, it comes with a pillow pack. Sometimes they don't come with a pillow pack. I don't get it. It's very inconsistent. It's been like that for a long time. So you're definitely gonna need a 50 hour seal kit and we are gonna need the full 200 hour seal kit or 125 hours. Everybody uses different time frames for that intervals. 803-00816. This includes everything we need, including our Delrin ball and our pellet, which I can't stand, but we will go over that later, all right? As for oil, for the damper, we are gonna need 10 weight green, no more red, it's green. It's been green for a while now. We're gonna need some SRAM butter or slicoleum or whatever your preference is as far as shock or for shock and fork grease. And if, we, if you're gonna service the dial, optional, we need a little bit of grease, okay? Not this grease, it has to be waterproof grease. But that's only if you service the dials and that is optional, we will get into that later, all right? Well, let's get into opening up this shock. As I mentioned, we are gonna need a vise and I installed my flat sock jaws. First thing we are gonna do is remove the shock mounting hardware, okay? This just makes it a little bit easier. This is optional, you don't have to remove it, but it stops it from you know swinging up and down on the vise, really. Ooh, this one comes out real easy. This one's gonna be super easy. Okay, now what we can do, check your bushings. I'm gonna take them out. I actually might replace them. I just don't know if I have spares. I think I do actually. All right, let me take these guys, take a pick, just move one of them a little bit out, just nudge them out a little bit. There we go. Don't force it just on one side, little by little on each side. And that's one. And then the other one should come out real easy. There we go. All right, this is technically a shock mounting hardware removal tool. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. In this case, well, I barely needed it. I'm gonna take all this and we are gonna put it on the side. Next up, we are gonna write down all our settings, right? Now on this shock, it really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go through this to go through the motion so you don't forget, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our rebound. We're gonna turn and count all the clicks to the full counterclockwise open position, right? So one, two, three, four, five, four, five actually, five clicks, right? Now, as far as compression, we're in the fully open, but a DPS has factory series has two types of compressions, right? So you have your fully open, pedal, and fully closed. But at the same time, you have this one, two, three over here. This one, two, three limits the fully open, right? So you're gonna get a little bit less compression. So this one was on two. If I put it on one, I get more, it's more open. If I put it in two, I sort of restrict how open it is. If I put it in three, it restricts it a little bit more, right? I mean, it's not locking it, it's just sort of slowing flow down. So this was on two, I'm gonna put it on one for the fully open. Next, I'm gonna take off the cap and put it on the side, make sure you don't lose the cap. We're gonna definitely need the cap for later. These are easy to lose. 
put in our shock pump. Make sure you put this in and write down whatever measurements or whatever air pressure, I should say. This one has, well, he must have taken out all the air. This one's got no air pressure in it, right? So if you have air pressure, you write it down. And then when you remove the air, remove it as slow as possible. The slower, the better, because it will allow you to remove from both chambers in order to make removing the air can easier, right? So we got no air. I don't have to worry about any of this stuff because like I said, he bought this thing. He's gonna set it up for himself. Next up, we'll put on the vise and take off the air can. All right, we are on the vise now. Let's see how stiff this thing is. Oop, yep, I got it. So if you can't do it by hand, you'll need a strap wrench. Ultimately, I was able to do this one by hand. Now, before we take it fully off, just to be safe, I'm gonna put a towel in here. So this way, if anything happens, it won't eject, right? The towel will stop it. So, just in case there's pressure in there that we're not aware of. What is that? Is this like a chip in there in the thread? Yep. Oh, weird. All right, there we go. Take our towel, put it on the side. Take this guy out. Whoops, I forgot to take out the side ring. Don't forget your side ring. And, I mean, I mean, it's definitely dirty, without a doubt. I mean, without a doubt, it's been used, right? It should be a completely different color, but it doesn't look all that bad. Let's take a white towel on him. Yeah, not all that bad. So, like I always do, I save the 50-hour service until the end. First, what I'm going to do is just clean out any oil before I set the air can on the side, and then I'm going to clean any grease or oil lube I should say so it doesn't make a mess over here like it's trying to make we are going to take our negative tokens out take the oil off of them and we're going to take this whole air can and the tokens and we are going to put it on the side and we are going to finish this up with a 50 hour service at the end of this video all right to open up the IFP chamber we need to remove this Delrin ball have I mentioned how much I hate this ball Usually what I would do is take a drill bit and I might end up doing that here, but to satisfy a subscriber's curiosity, what we're gonna do is try heat, okay? So you take a pick, you basically heat it up. The problem with this, I haven't done this in a long time. Last pick I did this to it, burned it up real well, like real good actually, All right? So I'm gonna make this really hot. There we go, it's red hot. Let's see how this works. So the question is, is it gonna go deep enough to pull it out? Nope. That's the thing, it never, now I gotta go in there and burn it again. And it makes a big giant mess. That's why I like the drill better. So let's try this again. Like I said, this is to satisfy one of my subscribers' curiosities. He saw this in a video question is we have no idea what these people went through to make that video look successful right so personally I just okay so this time so it took two times to get in there I probably could have done one if I made it hotter the only problem is this thing's ripping hot and like I said it really does a number on your picks right you end up burning the life out of them so uh personally I would still go this method I don't know if it's worth going this route okay be careful don't touch it this is ripping hot Put it on the side. Now, next, what we're gonna do is, see, and I left all sorts of plastic stuff. We're gonna open up that screw, five, 30 seconds with a little bit of paper. The paper is to make sure we stop any oil that might come out with the pressure when we release the air, all right? So put that in here, slowly open it to hear it. What? There we go. That was odd. That took quite a while. All right. No more air coming out. And we take out our screw. Put it on the side. Now we take a pick. Push down your pellet on one side. 
and lift it up on the other one. Be careful here. Come on. Wow, this one's being real stubborn. There we go. And then grab it by the hole, and you should be able to pull it out. Come on. Oop, nearly had it. Come on. Look at this thing. And there's our old del del rim, oh, our old pellet, not del rim ball. And this goes in the garbage. So we have the shock vertically in the flat jaws of the vise. We are going to take our 5 64ths Allen and take out the bleed screw. This bleed screw is in an awkward position. And we're going to take it, we're going to loosen it. Oh, air's coming out. That's not good. Whenever you see that, that means. Nope, you have air in the system basically, or air in your oil. Okay, take this guy out. I wish this was like Rock Shocks where it's like on an angle, so much easier. I wish both companies would just mix their best solutions together and create outstanding products. There we go. Okay, now we are going to take a magnet and get our ball that's inside, right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the magnet to Hold on to both the bleed screw and the bleed ball, and we're going to put it on the side. Next, you're going to grab a three quarter inch or a 19 millimeter wrench. Now, here's your bleed hole. We never want to put pressure on the bleed hole, right? So I don't want to unscrew it this way. What I want to do is put in a position where I unscrew it, and there is no pressure on the bleed screw, right? So right now, if I unscrew it, it's going to put the pressure on this corner and this corner. But before I do that, Let's put the pan underneath just in case oil comes out. Take this guy, and it's gonna be a good crack, and we crack him open. Okay. And we take him out. Take a look at him. All right. Let's take a look at our oil. Well, he's definitely discolored. There's no questions asked. And he's foamy and big time foamy considering he hasn't been used for a while. He's actually pretty damn foamy. So, let this guy rest in here for a bit. Let all the oil come out. And then we will remove the IFP from the inside. Just a reminder, folks, dispose of the oils appropriately. Don't put them down a toilet. Don't put them down a sink. Don't put them outside. Don't put them down a sewer. Don't put them in the garbage. Put them in a bottle that's marked clearly don't drink and ultimately bring them to your local bike shop or bring them to a mechanic shop or, a, or any oil shop. They will know how to dispose of this appropriately. To remove the IFP, we are going to need air. Just take an air can, put it at the hole, and boom, there's our IFP. All right, leave that in there for now. What we're going to do is grab cloth. In there real good, all the way to the bottom. Make sure the inside is nice and clean. Make sure the threads are clean. Now we inspect them. We make sure there are no scratches, no rubbing, no abrasions. That is perfectly clear. It's in great shape. It's in really good shape. To work on the IFP, we are going to need these seals. If you notice over here, I opened up seal kit 803-00-816. And I ordered by size, all right, to make your life easier to find the appropriate O-rings or seals for the appropriate parts, right? So first what we're going to do is we are going to take our IFP. We're going to take the seal off, use a blunt object, something that's not sharp at all. We don't want to scratch the edge of the IFP, all right? That's the old one. And this is the new seal. So what we are going to do, take a bit of cloth. Let's just clean them real well. Take off any old oil or debris from in there. All right. And we're going to take some grease. We're going to put them around the seal. Okay. And we're going to take the seal. We're going to put it on our IFP. And the IFP is done. To set the IFP depth, we absolutely need to know the size of our shock, right? So before you start this job, make sure you are absolutely sure what size shock you have. So in this case, this is a 190 by 40. If we look at this chart right there, you will see that you will not see a 190 by 40. You're going to see a 190 by 45. Well, that tells me that this shock has a travel limiter in it. 
And if I look under here, boom, there's my travel limiter. All right, so I go off the 145 measurement, which the chart is telling me is 2.15 inches or 54.61 millimeters deep. To put it in there, we're gonna need either a caliper or I, I really like Fox's IFP depth tool over here because it really, you can't overshoot with it, which is really nice. So I use both. So I set my caliper to 54.61 and then I make sure that both edges are touching in order to ensure that I am at 54.61 on my IFP depth tool. So I am all set, right? Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of grease. We're gonna coat the inside. Okay, let's coat the whole thing with a little bit of grease. All right, in fact, I probably should have put just a little bit more to be honest. Now we're gonna take our IFP flat part down. Okay, so make sure you're looking at this uh, concave part here. I'm gonna put it in. Now, why I like this tool, because I can shove it in there and boom, there's no way to overshoot it. Done. To finish prepping the damper body, our IFP is set. We're gonna take our pellet from the kit, right? It's beveled side, there's a flat side. Beveled side goes down, all right? Then we're gonna take our screw, pellet retaining screw, and we're gonna put that in there with our 530 seconds, which I forgot. 530 seconds. Screw them down, make sure you're screwing in right, and set the pellet all the way down to the base. Make sure he's all the way down, okay? And then back them out a little bit. We will get to that later. So. Our damper body is done. We're gonna put it on the side and next we are gonna work on our piston assembly. To take apart this piston assembly, let's take our bearing assembly, push it down, right? Then we have our compression plate, locking plate, I should say. We're gonna take our fingers from the underneath and we're gonna pick them up. Okay, be very careful with them. Inspect them, make sure he's straight. Oh yeah, that's perfectly straight. Nothing wrong with him whatsoever. We're gonna take him, we're gonna put it on the side, all right? So then we're gonna take our three nipple tool, nipples. We're gonna put them in. Gotta do it by hand, my hands are too slippery. And we are gonna loosen this top cap. Now be careful when you remove it, it's quite possible that there are shims stuck underneath it. And in this case, they are not, they are on the piston itself. We're going to put that on the side, take this tool, put it on the side. Now, next we're going to take our 5 8 super thin walled socket. Okay, now we're just going to loosen it. We're not going to remove it yet. Why aren't we going to remove it? Make sure there's no shim stuck in it because we're going to take our tie wrap or zip tie. And we're going to take the whole assembly out one shot, right? So, when it completely loosens, there we go. That is our tire piston assembly. Okay. Now, I'm going to completely take this apart just to make sure that all the shims are in good shape. But you can look at your shims. Much easier to do it on this assembly, right? Or on this tie wrap, I should say. So, you could just separate them like that. I'm absolutely going to take them apart, completely clean them, although they look like they're in really great shape. Nothing looks wrong whatsoever. Just be careful because it's very tricky. Sometimes it looks like it's one shim when it could actually be like multiple shims. Like this case here is probably three shims, if not one little one in the middle. I mean, there we go. It's multiple shims. Like I said, it's a whole bunch of shims. Yeah, so we're going to completely take him apart later when we do the assembly. So we're going to put him on the side. Next, we're going to take our bearing assembly. We're going to work on them later. We're going to take off our bumper. We're going to take off this washer. Put it on the side. Take off the travel limiter. And then we have a token, a rather large token. Okay. Pop him out. Be careful with that. There we go. Put him on the side, even though I'm probably not gonna put him back in since he's never used this shock before. I'm gonna leave him on the side for now. All right. And then we have one more seal in here. 
Okay, this is actually a 50 hour seal, although we get it in both kits. So we're gonna take this guy so we don't forget him. We're gonna put him on the side. Now, this is done. From this point on, technically, well, I wouldn't consider it optional. We are gonna change everything. There are two seals in this shaft. We're gonna change those. Technically, do you have to? Yeah, you really don't have to, in my opinion, if you're staying on top of your service regularly, and ultimately you're not experiencing any troubles as far as leaks, so on and so forth, right? Uh, and the knobs, the controls are also optional in my opinion, but I am gonna go through this whole thing so you could know how to get it done. To separate the shaft from the eyelet, what we first need to do is take some alcohol, make sure that shaft is clean of all, gre uh, clean of all grease. And we are gonna need a nine millimeter hole soft jaw. All right, now what I like doing is putting the dials towards you. Now, what we're gonna do is apply heat in this area over here in a little bit, okay? But that's why we take off the seals first so we don't burn our seal, right? So when we put this in, we're gonna apply heat just in this area for a few seconds, okay? Just to warm up the Loctite red that's in there. So give yourself some space underneath. All right. Now, this is a eyelet removal tool. We're gonna to take our heat. I don't need all that much. That's enough. Take our wrench or our ratchet and make sure it works down good. And there we go. We are loose. All right. Put them on the side. Do the rest by hand. You will notice when we take them off, be careful. So we could notice the position, even though I know what position it is, but for you, so our knobs are here, right? Now there's gonna be a metering rod with a bearing. And that, oh wow. And that is pointing towards the back. So that's typical for a Performance Elite and a Fox Factory series. The bearing points towards the back for a performance, it points towards the front, okay? So, is that just grease? What is that? Yeah, it is grease. I guess it looks weird. It's a weird color. All right. So this was absolutely serviced before. No questions asked. It was serviced before. I'm just looking at the Loctite, and uh, I don't think I've ever seen the Loctite come that thick out of the factory. Okay. So what we have over here is our metering rod that on side and our shaft. There's a seal in here, there's a seal in here, and that's what we will work on next. The first thing we are going to do is remove the seal inside this shaft. Now for that, that's where a needle comes in, right? So the seal is sitting around here in its own seat, right? Just about there. So we're gonna take our needle, and we're gonna try and pierce it on the side or puncture it. All right, move it out of its spot. If you look, it's out of its seat. And then we could technically even take metering shaft and push it all the way through or the metering rod or let me just take this is where a skewer comes in handy and there he is all right so this guy is done for now we will clean him up in a bit and then we have our second little seal inside the metering rod he is right around here okay what a weird grease Take him, we are gonna do the same thing. We're gonna force him out of his seat, just like that. We're gonna take the skewer. Oop, this skewer's too big. Should've got my smaller one. Is this one too big? Yep, oh, yep, this guy's too big. Uh -huh. Like I said, it could be tricky, worst case scenario. Be careful with the metering rod. We could just use the metering rod to push him out. And there he is. Or the metering rod, the compression plate, the lifting plate. Okay, there's our two seals. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna clean these guys up real well because there's a lot of like black stuff on here, like some kind of weird 
grease of some sort. I don't know what it is. First things first is we want to remove all this old red Loctite. As much off of it as possible from the threads. Stuff sticks in there pretty good. Okay. That took the heavy stuff off. Now, what we can do is grab a plastic brush. Don't use metal or you'll scratch them up real good. All right, clean. Now we're gonna take alcohol, spray them down, spray them down inside. Cause like I said, there's some kind of black grease on this thing. I don't know what it is. I don't think I've ever seen it like that before. All right. Clean the outside well. Next, what we're gonna do, ball up a bit, put it down the shaft. Just don't make it too thick. Uh, I made it too thick. All right. There we go. Huh. All right. Now we're going to push that guy through. And he should be all clean inside. Cool. He is done. This guy here, again, he's got like... I'm running out of alcohol. There we go. Should take it. See what I mean? Almost looks like it's corroded, but it's not corroded. It's definitely not corroded. It looks like it, but it's not. It's whatever grease they used before had some kind of. I don't know. It's just weird. I mean, the green stuff makes sense. I've seen that before, but it has like some kind of black and beige. Let me see if I can get in there and get it all out for him. At least to get it out of the seal seat. Okay, that's looking pretty clean and I'm gonna do one better. I shift it inside. Oh yeah, fits nicely. All right, squeeze them one more time, put them on the hole. I don't know, I'm sure I got all that okay, out of alcohol on this thing. I gotta get a new bottle. There we go. All right. Now I'm sure this guy is clean. We're gonna let him dry and we're gonna swap out the seals. To swap out the seals, first we must replace the seals. So this small one is gonna be the smallest one in the pack. So that's going to be the small one here. And this one usually is the one underneath it, as long as I aligned them right. Yep, that is him right there. All right, now to put these guys in, a bit of a trick, not too hard. We're going to take some grease, start off with the shaft, okay? Now we want to do is vertically put them in until he sits here, and we want to put one end or one side of the seal into its seat and the rest of the seal to be underneath that seat. Okay, so we want it to land around there somewhere. So what we're gonna do is, this is the tr little bit of a tricky part trying to sink in below. This is where a square head skewer comes in. Oops, you don't wanna do that. Uh, there we go. Okay, perfect. He is perfectly aligned. You see him? He's right here right now. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a pick. And I'm going to try and roll him in and you will feel him. In fact, I just felt him go in. Yep, he's definitely in on that side, right? And once he's in on that side, what we're going to do is we're going to take our metering rod. And we're going to push it in. Boom. Boop. He popped out. I nearly had him. Do that again. So take this guy, bring him down. I don't know if you guys can see that well. Okay, he is below. 
I'm going to take him. Like I said, you will feel him pop into his seat. And if you see, he's in his seat right there. Okay, so now let's do that again. Take our metering rod, push him up, and he should put him right back into his seat. Ooh, so close. So close. Let's see if I can do it from up here. Ooh, so close. Yep, he's in. There we go. So, that one is done. Again, he's perfectly in. And we're going to do the same thing to this one. This one's a little bit easier because he's closer to the top. But he is small. And getting him in sideways sometimes can be tricky, especially with gloves on. So squeeze him with your nails best you can. Squish him with your nails best you can. But again, he gets... He's so small, he's hard to grip sometimes. There we go. Nope. Come on. There we go. Ah. Easier without gloves, but I'm sick and tired of... Come on. Then he can be a pain in the butt without gloves. Let's try and do him with the skewer again. Hmm. Hmm. Oop, nearly had him. There we go. Same thing. Take him. Rope oh, right there. I believe he just popped in. Either he popped in or he went a little bit too low. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our metering rod and see if we could tuck him in. Technically, you could even do it with a skewer. Camera overheated right at the end over here, but I got him right in the exact spot we were. So now, again, I got him with the lifting plate, and he is in. All right. So now we have both our, careful with the lifting plate, both our new seals in. What we are going to do is we're going to take grease. We're going to put on the shaft on the outside over here. Be somewhat liberal with it. Don't go too crazy. All right. Now we're going to take this guy and we're going to put him in. Remember, the bearing part stays up. This might be a little bit stiff because a new seal in there. And there you go. This guy is done. Next, we're going to take apart all the dials and clean the entire head plus the dials. And this is optional, guys. If you don't have an issue with your dials, you do not have to do this, okay? Once again, the dials are optional. If you're not having any issues with them, don't even bother, right? So, first thing we're gonna do, one and a half millimeter Allen. We're gonna take off this top screw, which holds it all down in place. And when you unscrew it, just angle it out and it should pop out just like that. All right, now watch out. You have a spring and a ball in here. Take it out carefully. A lot of grease, not too much dirt, so that's good. We're gonna take our ball and put it on the side. Then we're gonna take our spring. Could I grab it? Nope. Grab a pick, a little spring in here, and we're gonna take it out right there, boom. Let's them both on the side, make sure you don't lose that ball, all right? So we're gonna clean all this in a bit. Now, we have an axle that's held on to our rebound rod, or a rebound knob. Again, call this in order. We have one and a half millimeter in your Whoa, what's going on over here? Is this thing going bad on me? Probably is, man. This thing's been so used. Or there's probably too much dirt on that guy in there. Okay. Obviously, I'm having a bit of an issue here. Let me try a different Allen key. Let's try this one here. Try that again. Where are you? Oops. You are right there. Doesn't look like there's dirt. I thought I cleaned it out. There we go. Yep. The head on this guy's finally going on me. Now, we're just going to loosen him and pull out the dial. Just don't take out the nut. You don't need to take out the screw. Just take him out enough where you can take out the dial. 
There we go, or the, yeah, the dial, right? Ooh, that's really muddy. Now what we are going to do is take out our two cams. Compression cam, rebound cam. Put them on the side. Okay, now this is optional. You can't take this out. You don't have to. I am going to take it out so I can clean everything and make sure he's totally spotless inside. Do that. Make sure you're able to see the ring washer that's in there. So there's a little ring washer. Now this guy is a bit of a pain in the butt to get out. You gotta be a little bit careful over here. There's a spring that holds it all together, right? And basically there is essentially a clip. He's literally a ring washer as opposed to putting a C-clip. They made him like a round washer type clip. You have to find the edge Okay, and that is literally the trickiest part, is finding the edge so you could figure out how to split them and take that in. Am I on frame? Yes. Too busy looking at this thing. Where are you? I can't feel him. I can't see him. I can't feel him. Come on. I mean, I see a split, but where's the end? Oh, there he is. There we go. See what I mean? Now I got the clip. I got the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk him around. Make sure he doesn't spring out on you. Okay. Just walk him around. And he's out. And there's going to be a washer underneath it or spacer and then the spring and that is our entire assembly to clean them well let's start with this dial over here uh, this guy just happens to have a lot of gunk on him I'll take a little brush over here this one is actually really filled up with crap Okay, a little bit of alcohol. Yeah. Come on. Paper towel. Gonna clean him. Put all the clean parts up there. And he is clean. One. Ooh. A lot of mud in here. Okay. Oh, he's really dirty on the inside too. Oh. All right. Oh. Come on. I gotta swap out this bottle, guys. I'll do it right after this. Okay. What we are going to want to do is clean the inside. Two ways to do that. There's one way. Ah, it's clean. Perfect. Okay, this is number two, nice and clean, let's clean this guy here, explains why that one was so sticky, that one was sticking bad, okay, clean the inside, Right. Clean the inside here. Put them through. Get all that gunk out. Okay. 
and it's clean. Okay, clean our spring. Get all that grease off. Spring is clean. So it goes like that. Clean our washer. And clean our locking ring. Okay. Done. Well, since I'm here, let me fill up this guy. Let me change them out. I'll be back. Clean our cams. Get all this old grease off. So we can put on new grease. Okay. Don't be stubborn. Make sure he's clean on the inside. In fact, let's spray him down on the inside. Where's the hole? Looking good. All right. This guy, clean the grease off of him. All right, I like that. Clean our balls. Oh, our ball. We only got one ball. Clean our spring because that's got dirt on it. Spray them down. All right. Any old grease. Done. Clean our screw. This guy has a significant amount of mud and dirt on him. Try and clean the inside so your Allen, your one and a half Allen key sits in there easily. Clean. Now we clean our eyelet. Let's grab all this thick stuff in here. Doesn't go inside, or at least so we don't take them inside with us. Then spray them well on the inside. Grab a new clean paper towel. Clean the inside. Make sure you clean the threads, right? Make sure you clean the threads real well so we have good connection with the air can later. All right, what you can do for the threads, just take plastic, again, plastic brush if you have one. Okay, now we're gonna clean the threads on the seat for a seal in there. In fact, there is a seal in there that we need to remove. Forgot about that. Okay. All right, while we're here, Hey, what I do with my pick, there it is. There is a seal right over there. Totally forgot about him. Leave him on the side. We will replace him again. Let's go in there. Let's clean the inside real well. Make sure there's no old Loctite in there. Make sure there's no dirt in there. And lastly, we will clean the inside of here. Very important spot. Nice, right, clean. Do it one more time for good luck. Okay. 
All right. That's it for cleaning, folks. Now let's put them together. We're gonna grab these two knobs, right? So this is our compression knob. We're gonna take that arrow and make sure it's pointing at the numbers. All right. Doesn't matter which number for now, we will just leave it right there. Let's leave it on the one, right? So then we're gonna put our spring. Now this is gonna get a little bit tricky. Then we're gonna get our washer, right? Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Again, this is a split ring. What we wanna do is open up the split, put it in, and then walk it around. Just watch how it doesn't spring out on you. Walk it around until he is all the way in. So put him in his seat. Well, he was in a seat. You're going to do one side first, right? Hopefully you can see that well. So put, see what I mean by he could spring out on you? The whole thing could spring out on you. So again, what we're going to do, it's hard with gloves on actually. So make sure this guy's in here. The whole idea, we need to sink this guy down until the seat is exposed. And then with this guy here, what we want to do is split them at the bottom, find the beginning, oop, he's right on my thumbnail, which is a good thing if I could spin them around this way. So, give you an idea. Like I said, this is a little bit tricky, especially with gloves. There you go. So again, we want to split them just like that, right? Except you want the bottom part split. There's the bottom part right there, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the spring, take the washer and compress them. All right. So washer's in here. This might take a couple couple of tries. Again, he is tricky, right? Now we want to compress him until we could expose the seat. And then you want to push him in just like that. All right. Nearly there. And then we just want to roll him in. I got him. Yep. Nearly got him. It's got this corner left. And that's it. And we managed it. Now we test him. There we go. Oh, much smoother than before. Holy cow. It is so much smoother. Before he would stick, I'd have to actually force him from one to the other one. So, sweet. So that is done, right? So now what we're gonna do, grab our cams. We're gonna put this cam into this cam. Actually, what we will do, put some grease on this cam before putting them into this cam. All right like that. Now we take this cam, the whole cam mechanism. Now if you notice over here you have a dimple, right? That's what we have to screw into. So this guy locks out just like that, right? Cool. Now what we are going to do is find our little dimple. We're going to grab our rebound knob and line up the grub screw with that dimple right there. Grab our one and a half millimeter and make sure he is sunk in there. Don't assume, test it. Screw down until he stops. Okay, he just stopped. And there we go. Now he's ready to go back into the eyelet. Next, what we're gonna do we're going to take a little bit of grease and put it in the hole over here. Okay, probably shouldn't have used that. Then we're going to take our spring, put it in there. We're going to take a little bit more grease. We're going to put it above the spring. Why are we going to put it above the spring? So our ball sticks to it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a good amount of grease and put around our cams. There you go. All right. Now what we are going to do is we are going to insert this guy, make sure that this 
line up or this empty spot over here lines up with this hole at the base, right? So we're gonna put them in there. Watch out for the ball. There we go. All right. So squeeze them in until you see them. Then we're gonna take our screw and put them in there. Let's see if this guy will work for this screw here. Took them out, you should be able to put them in. Now what we're gonna do is screw this screw all the way down until it stops. Okay, he's totally stopped. Now we're gonna back him out a quarter turn. Just like that. Boom, done. That works nice and sweet. That works great. And this is not gonna work until we put the whole shock together. This works out pressure. All right, we are done with our knobs and our eyelid. What we are gonna do is continue the 200 hour service, which technically includes this seal over here next. So we're back to the 200 hour service right now, right? Ultimately, we have to change out the two seals in the eyelid, this big one and this small one that goes inside. So we're gonna find our replacements. This is the old one, that's gotta be the new one. Yes, it is. That's one and yep, that's the old one. This is the new one. All right. So first what we're going to do, put a little grease on this guy, sink them in. There's a seat just below the threads. This guy's easy, but sometimes he can be annoying because he likes to wave and flop around. Mm, get in there. There we go. Again, he likes to wave and flop around. My on frame, great. There we go. Oh, see what I mean? Like I said, he's got a mind of its own, this guy. Just when you think he's in. There we go. Now he's in all the way around, right? And then we gotta put the one on the inside. Put some grease on him. Don't go too crazy with grease on this guy, even though we're gonna have to clean the threads later. Again, we're gonna put them inside. We're gonna take our pick. We're gonna try and seat him. He's at the base down here, right? So try and stick him down there. I don't know. There we go, on one side. My problem is this guy went too far down. Okay, we got one side there. Now let's try and tuck him in the other side. Already there, and done. There we go. Now what we are gonna do is go in there and clean the threads. Cause we're gonna have to put Loctite on this guy and Loctite Red 277 does good with fluids, but let's not make his job too difficult. All right, that takes care of that. This guy's back. Now, make sure we have no grease on the threads. I'm going to take some Loctite Red. I'm going to put them at the top here. Don't put too much. That's more than enough. Let them sink in. The threads. Now, make sure your metering rod's sticking up a bit. We got the ball, right? Here's your dials. The ball, again, like we said, goes to the back, right? So for performance series, and performance series, performance elite and factory and factory series, it goes to the back for performance, it goes to the front, right? So we're gonna take this guy and we know he's to the back. We're gonna tuck him in, okay? And we start turning. It's a good sign. Dials are turning. Let's clean our shaft. That's right guys, keep your shaft clean. We're gonna put them in the vise. 
All right, let's do the rest by hand for now. Okay, torque wrench, 9.6 Newton meters. Put him in, make sure he's not turning. He's turning, tightening down. Here we go, 9.9, .9, still within specs. A little bit hot, but not too hot. And our eyelet assembly is done. Now let's start assembling the rest. First, we're gonna put in our spacer. Then we're gonna put in our washer. Make sure they're clean, actually. Washer's nice and clean. Bumper, we have a new bumper. It's the old one, this is the new one. Technically, it doesn't need grease. Put the bumper on, right? Now, these are the 50 hour seals. We're gonna deal with them later. We got two seals, one on the inside here and one on the inside here, right? So let's take this guy here. Since he's the easier one, put him on the side. Then we're gonna grab this pick here, be careful. All right, just stab him. This guy's stiff. There we go. Just make sure you don't hit the side of, oop, thought I had him. Come on. Boy, man, it's really being difficult. Let's see if I can scoop him out like this. Come on. Come on. Oh boy, my hands are slippery. There we go. Done. Pull him out. Those are our two seals. I don't like doing the 50 hour seals now just in case something happens and I damage them. That's why I always do them later. We're going to clean. Now, since we don't know the history of this guy, check the bushings on the inside. Yep, he's clean. No markings, no rubbings, no nothing. It's good. Find a replacement. That's this guy here. And this one is obviously this white one here. Okay, so first let's put in the white one. Now, what I like doing is putting a lot of grease on the seat on the inside. My frame, yes. Okay. I'm going to take the remainder of the grease, put them on the bearing, I mean, on the seal. Okay. Now, this guy's stiff. Squishing them together is going to be a little bit hard. Squish them in there. Get one side to sit in, just like that. Put him in a seat. Make sure he's in a seat. Now, stick the other side in. Oh, my. I'm forgetting to stay in frame. All right. Nearly there. Be careful with the bushing and done. We are in. Take any remaining grease. Put on this guy here. And we take him. And we put him at the base of the bearing assembly. And he's done. Okay. Now we can take this guy, put a little bit of grease here. Make sure he slides on a little bit easier. And it's gonna be a little bit stiff because they're brand new seal on the inside. Rock them and done. Now what we're gonna do is clean out any grease on the threads. See that? I don't know if you see that. Camera's too close, I think. Okay. Make sure our threads are as free as grease as possible. And he looks good. What is that? Two eyes to see me. No, it's nothing. Let's make sure he's nothing. Okay. That's the beauty about doing this on your own, guys. You can take your time. There is no rush. Next up, 
I'm going to take this apart. You don't have to take this apart. I'm going to take it apart, put it back together and put it in. I want to make sure everything's kosher with this thing, right? I'm probably going to also change the, well, we'll talk about the Teflon ring. Again, you don't have to take this apart. I'm going to take it apart just so I could be 100% sure everything's cool here. All right. So the way you do it is keep it here. Don't take it off your zip tie or your tie wrap, right? So this is the top part that screws down, right? So we're going to start at the bottom part. And we're going to be very careful. So we're always going to test everything. So the flat part goes down, right? So now we're going to grab shim. We got one shim and always test your shims before taking them out because man, you would be amazed how these things stick together. Okay. These are compression shims, by the way. Yeah. Small one. Sometimes it seems like it's one and it's like two, three. Spacer. See what I mean? There you go. Make sure that's its own. Another one. See, just when you thought, I thought it was one and it's two. Because they make them different thicknesses, right? That one's got a little bit of Okay, make sure that this is the only one. Yes, it is. Three. This guy goes here. This guy goes inside that guy. Uh. Okay, is this one? Yes, it is one. Okay, that's our compression, right? So now down here we have our rebound. We just stuck to the base of the actual piston. So again, so this guy technically goes down. So we're gonna put him. In. Okay, now here we got to be careful again. Make sure you separate them see what i mean be careful watch out make sure you separate them see what i mean look how many there are in here just when you feel like he's one or two of them turns out he could be sometimes he could be three five more okay that's one there's two and your stack could be well chances are your stacks can be different because there's like many different stacks they have for this shock right some are custom for certain bikes Okay, so I don't recommend you do this personally if you maintain your stuff. And these are static. In other words, these are consistent. They never change. But there are two spacers in here. Oop, there's one down here. See what I mean? He's stuck at the base. Mm -hmm. That nearly tricked me. Mm -hmm. You see that good? Hopefully you see that good. And that's got to be a spacer. He's just stuck there. He has to be. I refuse to believe that he's not. There you go. Okay. Mm. There we go. So that's the last rebound spacer. All right. Okay, now we have our screw. See? Two of them. Just when you think it's one. So, let's do this guy here. This guy is one. And we have two spacers here, I bet. If not three. Is it a double or is this a fat single? This is a fat single. Okay. And then we should have our last two. One. And like I said, always do this on a zip tie or a tie wrap. It's the last one right here. Mm. 
Come on. Nearly there. Boy, man, he doesn't want to come out. Okay. Spacer. Okay, here's the last one. Come on. Watch him be like two of them. Yeah, he's going to be one. I'm sure he's going to be one. Come on, stop being... Look at this guy. For the love. Does not want to come out. Wants to spin in there, but does not want to come out. Oh, you know what? There you go. It'll be like that. I could play hardball too. There we go. Make sure he's one. Is he just one? So once again, the camera overheated, but I managed to get out the last two shims plus the bolt that holds it all together, all right? So I cleaned everything while the camera was cooling off. Now we have an option over here and I highly recommend you don't do this, right? So in most of my, in all my videos, I think, I always show replacing the Teflon ring around the piston. And the reality is, you shouldn't do this, okay? Because it could get a little bit tricky. In fact, I recorded a video, I wanna say a couple of months ago. I don't remember if it was a DPX2 video or a Float X where I changed it out and I ran into a bit of a snag when I was trying to close up the top eyelet to the whole upper assembly to the damper body. And then basically I had to use the damper body like this as a sizer in order to fit the Teflon ring on the piston. And believe it or not, that could happen more common or that could be more common than you think it is, right? Now there is a tool to get this done uh, and we're gonna go over that here, but unless your Teflon ring is physically damaged, I highly recommend you don't touch it. It's probably gonna just open up a can of worms for you, okay? So just leave it alone, but I'm gonna show it and I'm gonna use this time in this video, I'm going to use a tool that Fox uses to actually set it all in there, right? So to take it out, basically, usually I take it out when it's all assembled, right? But since I have everything disassembled here, so what we're going to do is essentially lift it up and move it all over. Make sure you don't scratch your, whatchamacallit? Okay, so that's the piston. Now we have to make sure we determine we know which, there's two different types. This is the stepped one, right? So if we look, we have a step on the piston over here. We need the step Teflon ring. This one now is deformed, but we have one in the kit. This is a flat one, see this is flat. And if that's the flat one, this is the step one. There's the step, okay. So again, the whole goal here is to try and stretch it the least amount possible, right, before we put it in. So try and put them in as evenly. It's actually easier when he's fully assembled. First of all, do I have them on the right way? Yes, I do. We should make sure that the step is the right way, right? So the step goes in here. So I definitely have them the right way. So again, the goal is to try and fit them in as evenly as possible without stretching them. Now, there we go. Now, if you stretch them, chances are you're not going to have the Fox tool. If you stretch them, when he's assembled, what you're going to do is use the damper body when he's all assembled, right? You're going to put this on the vise upside down like this. Again, all this is going to be assembled. You don't need, don't put in the lifting plate. And what you're going to do is you're going to use the damper body to fit them in. Actually, is that dirt? To fit them in, you're going to sink them into the damper body. Then you're going to leave them there for about an hour, two hours, okay? And he will take his shape if he's stretched out. Because when you try and bleed him, if you force him in and he doesn't fit right, you're never going to be able to bleed it right, and ultimately you'll probably tear your ring, right? Now, what Fox has, and I finally found, I've had this for who knows how long, is a tool. This is a band sizing tool, basically, right? And the whole goal for this tool is to, well, pressure, press the band into the piston, right? Now, I will admit that I've never been 100% sure on how to use this tool from which way you put the piston in. I've always assumed it was this way because it seemed like the safest bet, right? Just like that. 
And then you take this guy and you basically press him in. Put him in a little bit more. I could use the vise for this, but for the most part, there we go. So he is in. See what I mean? And what happens, he tapers off. He gets thinner and thinner and thinner as he comes out. So then I could put him on the vise, just like this. And squeeze him through. And he's going to squish him in place, basically. There we go. And you just let him out. Ta-da! So now, technically, this should be all squeezed in evenly all the way around. But the reality is this, guys. You could do the same with this. I want to say, back in 2021, I must have spent like, God, maybe 70, 80 bucks for this. I don't know what it cost today, and I lost it. And it's funny because one of the subscribers, Bob, thank you very much for reminding me of the whole thing. Ultimately, I ended up finding it. Now we're going to assemble. All right. So again, we started this way, that way, and then we ended up this way, right? So we're going to start from the back end to the front. Make sure we get all our shims in order. All right. Now we got our bolt, because that literally is a bolt, right? I'll bring it down and make sure he doesn't fall out the back, just curve him. Then we are going to start with our rebound shims. One. Two. Three. And again, you don't have to do this. You really don't. Four. Put that guy inside. Make sure they all fit. We'll go around. There we go. All right. Watch out for the back that nothing slips out. Now our compression shims. One. Slip them on there. Two. Now slip this guy good because this guy, he's going to go over that guy. Just like that. See that? So whenever you see those thin rings, that means there is a smaller one that goes inside it. Four. Five, spacer, hmm. spacer, and spacer. Please tell me I'm sad. Uh, and remember the flat side goes down. And we are good. All right. Now we're going to take them. Slide them on in. Make sure everything is fitting. And we screw in the bolt. Okay. Can do now is grab our tool or socket. I think the camera's too close. There we go is all the way down. Now we're going to take off our tie wrap. Oh, uh, where'd it go? Torque wrench, 6.8 Newton meters for this bolt. Try and be precise here. At least as precise as you can. Take your time. And... Oh. 6.84, well within specs, make sure there's no washers down there. Now, we're gonna take this cap. Make sure the washers are sitting there right. And put him in. Grab our little three nipple tool. Okay, and this guy goes down to 2.5 newton meters. Bring him down 2.5. And two point five three. Well within specs. All right. Now 
We have our locking plate for our lifting rod. Okay, touch them only from the top down. Don't touch them from the sides. Top down, just like that. Now let's test them. Put them in a fully open, he should pop up. If we put them in a fully closed, he should go down. Since we worked on the dials and took everything apart, we wanna make sure that this, this lifting plate comes up within tolerances that Fox wants it to come up at, right? So if you look at this chart over here, you will see different tolerances for a remote version and a regular lever versions, right? So this one over here, from the fully locked position to the pedal mode, and others from here to the middle, or fully clockwise to the middle, it should be anywhere between 0 0.03 and 0 0.047 inches. So we're gonna grab a dial, okay? Now, make sure it's in the fully locked and you're going to press it down, okay? We need to make sure it's all the way down, locked, right? So then, we're going to take this dial, hopefully you can see this. Okay, we're going to set it to zero. There we go, at zero. Now I'm going to put it in the pedal position. And boom, I'm at, well, I went up 0 0.04. So that's perfect. I'm well within specs. Outstanding. Again, this is optional, but it, it helps you ensure that you did the job right and something's not messed up. Before I bleed, let me better explain what I was talking about before using the damper body to seat the Teflon ring. So basically, if you decide to change your Teflon ring, which I highly recommend you don't, don't do it unless it's, it's damaged or worn, okay? Just don't do it. Chances of it being more problems than it's worth is really high. But let's say you do do it and you can't fit the piston in the damper body. You, what you're gonna do is take your eyelet, attach it to the vise just like this, and then you're gonna take your damper and slowly fit it in there, okay? And make sure it's even all the way around, just like that, let it sink in, make sure it's even, and then let it sit there. You're gonna have to let it sit there for like the better part of an hour. The whole idea is to sort of form that Teflon ring into it, its seat. And now for the bleed. So. We have our damper body, we put it on the vise. I put a paper towel around it and a container underneath it just in case oil does fall out, right? We will be needing our 10 green oil. In my case, I have some in this tube. So I'm gonna put this guy on the side, get him out of the way. Now, we're gonna prep our tools needed for this. For starters, we're gonna need our bleed screw and our ball that goes inside the bleed hole, right? The 5 64ths Allen, either a 19 millimeter or three quarter inch wrench and your Torx wrench, again, 19 millimeter or three quarter inch crow's foot at 27 Newton meters, right? And what comes in handy is something rubbery where we could tap just to make sure there's no oil that gets trapped or no air that gets trapped in the oil somehow, right on the damper body. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our oil and we're gonna slowly fill the damper body with oil. Bring it pretty much to the top. We don't have to go all the way to the top just yet. Leave it there. Let's tap it just in case. Again, don't use metal or anything, just this pure rubber over here, right? It's not even plastic. So that's why I like this thing. Okay. So now first thing we want to do, take the, uh, Compression knob, put it in the lock position, push down the lifting plate, and then we go to the fully open position and we see the lifting plate lift up. So now we know we're in the fully open position. Our dial here is set to one, so we are good, right? Now we're gonna make sure we're gonna take our bearing assembly and pick it all the way up. Now the goal over here is, I mean, we're not done yet, but ultimately to give you an idea of what we're gonna do, we're not gonna, hold the shock from here to put it in because we do not want to sink in the eyelet, right? So we're going to completely put it in from here. What we do after we finish filling it up with oil is take it, roll it, sink it, and start turning, okay? So what I'm going to do now, top this guy off with oil, right to the top. Now what I like doing is tapping this guy up with oil too, filling him up. All right. All right, so again, like I said, don't grab from here and sick them down by mistake, right? We wanna make sure that eyelet assembly is all the way up to the piston 
and then we're going to take them. I can't see because of the camera. Actually, get rid of that. We're going to take them. We're going to sink them. We're going to invert them. We're going to sink them, and then, well, sink them. We're going to put them in, and then start turning. All right. So one, two, three, go. Just like that. Sink them in and turn. As we do that, oil is going to come out of the bleed hole with air. Turn my hands a little bit. Let's grab our wrench. Right now, it doesn't matter where the wrench is. Where it will matter is when we go to torque them down. So our bleed hole is right there. So I'm not putting pressure on my bleed hole. I can see the air coming out as I turn them. All right. Air is coming out. Air is still coming out a little bit. Now, we know our bleed hole is right here. So we want to make sure we don't put pressure on them. 27 newton meters. And what's going on? There we go. Uh, 27.3, technically it's 27.1. All right, so our bleed hole is right here at the corner. Now, I'm gonna take the bear, the little ball, don't lose them. Like I said, don't lose them. Big tear on my gloves, which does not make life easier. Sink the ball in there. Now the big pain in the butt. Trying to fit in the bleed screw. And we tie him down, finger tight. A little tighter than that. There we go. So we take them, twist them, finger tight. And he is bled. Now we're gonna fill him up with the nitrogen system. First things first, take off the protective cover. Watch your fingers if you do this, if you use this system. I have a video out there that shows you exactly how to use this system. I also have a video out there that shows you exactly how to fill the chamber up with a hand pump, all right? A detailed video. So if you're gonna do, most of you are probably gonna do it that way. So definitely go check out that video. As far as this system over here, we're gonna put on this tool. Screw it on there. Make sure it's all the way down. There we go. Now, I've already charged the system to 500 PSI, right? So now I'm gonna insert Bring this guy back here. I'm going to insert, actually, before I do that, let's make sure that this guy is tight. So what we're gonna do is tighten the screw down all the way, right? Just about there is all the way. Then I'm gonna back them out about an eighth to quarter turn, say somewhere around there, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is load, is press this safety button and sink it in and we're going to tighten them back down all right now i got my gauge over here never look at the gauges right whenever activating whether it's the tank at the bottom or this guy over here so i got my valve over here now we're going to open them up and we are going to look for 500 psi let him get up to 500 he is at exactly 500 now we're going to close him He has not moved, okay? So again, we're nearly locked down, and now we're gonna pull him out straight that way, and you're gonna hear a big snap, all right? So one, two, three, done. And he is full. So now what I can do, although I should have had my Allen with me, I totally forgot him. Let's make sure that he is locked down fully. We don't have to crank him down too, too hard. Just wanna make sure that he is Fully seated, put our protective cap back on. And we are done. And we're on the dyno. So I have all the dials to the fully open position, compression fully open, even this guy over here is set to one, right? So he's fully open, the rebound is fully open, fully counterclockwise. Beautiful. Out of peep. Put him to lockout. Ooh, not a millimeter. He is 100% fully locked 
out. Let's put them to pedal mode. Oh yeah, definitely more pressure than this. Oh yeah, this actually it's a, feels like a pretty big difference actually. So, so that is good. Now let's take our rebound. Let's bring our rebound all the way down. Close them up. Not going anywhere. And there we go. Our rebound is working. Let's try clicking him. I can never really tell the difference. Honestly. On, when you ride him on a trail, you can feel the difference a little bit going from one, two, three, but it's very subtle to be honest. It takes a while to get used to it. So anyway, all I know, this guy is working perfectly. Perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. Love it. Next up, let's finish the 50 hour service. Now let's finish this guy up. So I opened up the 50 hour service seal kit right now. Technically this big one goes inside the eyelet. This is also, this is in both kits, the two, 125 hour, 200 hour, whatever, the damper service and the 50 hour service. All right, but we already changed this guy. So I am not gonna need him. Ultimately I have the air can kit and then I have the bearing assembly kit over here, or at least seals over here, right? So we're gonna start with the air can kit. First thing we're gonna do is take out the existing seals. There goes our wiper. Let's go inside here. Let's pull out, well, let's grab this guy and pull out the quad ring first. Okay, be careful. Don't scratch the inside anywhere. There's our quad ring. And now we got these two Teflon seals over here. Careful with them. That's where I'll use this blunt guy. There we go. Ooh, he's dried up. Wow, he cracked real easy. Huh. I don't know. I don't know when the last time this thing got serviced. I mean, without a doubt, that oil in this thing was super aerated. All right, so he's empty. Let's take alcohol, paper towel. Clean up the inside. Make sure you get in this area over here because dirt and oil tend to gather in that area. Okay. Inspect the inside. He is looking good. Now it's clean within the seats in here. What we're going to do is grab a paper towel. What we want to do is sink it into the seat. Make sure we get the paper towel into the seat. And then first we're going to do the seat that holds these seals here. Wipe them around. Let's do that again. Make a square out of them. Tuck them in the seat. Push them all in there. Spin them all the way around. Hmm. Let's do that again. Tuck them all in there. Turn around. It's looking a little bit better. Let's do the wiper seat now. Come in. All the way around. See, that's dirt. And we do not want any of that going back in. So let's do that again. Okay. I'm going to grab a clean one. Make sure we're damp. Let's do that again. First, let's do the inside seat. Okay, now let's do the wiper seat again. Try and stick them in best you can. All the way around. That was a little bit, and this time around, I guarantee you, he's clean. Well, I don't want to say guarantee, but chances are he is going to be clean. Yep. Now let's make sure we get the base down there one last time. And we are good. Now if you have a plastic brush, brush off the threads. Plastic brush, don't use metal here. Now what you can do is use your fingernail and just go all the way around it once. Get the base. 
And there we go. Clean enough. I opened up my little float kit. First, I'm going to start with this little base seal here for this Teflon ring. Put a little bit of float fluid on them. Okay. Now, just bend them a little bit. And try and put them in just like that. First one's always easy. It's the second one that's a pain in the butt. Then we're going to grab our quad ring. Let's put some float fluid on him. Okay. Towel through my fingers. He goes in front of that Teflon ring. Squeeze him in. Yeah. There we go. Now, him, we need to make sure he's not twisted. And he is not twisted. Now, grab this Teflon ring. Cover him. And again, we're going to try and fit him on top of the quad ring. Just like that. So he's inside the quad ring on top. Okay, now this guy sometimes he could squish pretty bad. There we go. You know, it's, sometimes they don't go that in that easy. So just an FYI, right? So now we're going to put our new wiper. And, oh. Okay, and our wiper is in. This is our new sag ring. All right, so we're gonna leave that on the side for now. Next, let's change these seals. Mounted the shock onto the device. I'm gonna grab, ah. Anyway, these guys here, the two white ones, these are split rings. So just find the split, be careful over here. Find the split, there's a split. And these are the same size ring on each side. There we go. There's one. Let's grab the other one. Be careful over here. Don't scratch your eyelet. There's the split right there. All right. Now, grab my little blunt tool here. Since he's safer than a pick, I take out the quad ring. Let's clean this guy. All right, took out all the old oil. Cool. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the base over here. All right, squish them all the way around if you can. Now, we're going to start off here with the quad ring. Put oil on them. We're going to take them in now. We need to make sure he does not twist when we put him in there, right? Okay. okay. Inspect him. Make sure he spins around and he did not twist. Put a little bit of oil on your fingers. Grab these split rings. Be careful with them. Now, split rings, they install like this. They don't install like that, right? So make sure it's like that. Start this side here. Don't overstrike. See, that's not right. And that's right. So that's one. A little bit of oil on this guy. And we'll put down here. Try and offset them in different angles or different positions. Don't overstretch him. And he is done. Now let's put on our negative tokens. Don't know if he needs two of them to be honest but these are very easy to change i didn't put his other token i'm going to let him decide what he wants to put on it as far as i know that one could be way too big for him so now we want to put in our air can so what we're going to do is we're going to put a good amount of oil on here just let that one just drip down right then we're going to take about half this packet and put it on the inside here 
All right. Got a little bit more. Spin them around. Okay. Now we're going to take this guy. We are going to install him. Put him in. He's going to be a little bit stiff at first because we got new seals. Now we're going to take him down a little bit. And we're going to take just about the remainder of this pack and pour it in here. All right. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, let's make sure this guy is nice and tight down. Now, what we are going to do is sink them in until we hear the negative empty out into the positive. Should hear. There you go. Once you hear that, now he's easy. We cleaned our threads on both the eyelet and the air can. Now I tighten this guy down by hand. Put some alcohol on him. Get really good grip. Now, you could use a strap wrench if you want. I don't. Just turn them tight by hand. All right. Now we got our side ring. Let's put in our downward ball. Take the ball, put it inside the screw hole over there. And what we're going to do is close this up, tilt it as it gets close. Oops, make sure you. Apparently it was underneath. Tilt it as it gets close. Make sure it touches on both sides. Ah, I hate this thing. Technically, you don't even need it. Ah, am I? Great, now fell on the floor. Third time's a charm. Let's find out. So again, let's open this up. As we close it, there we go. Touch, and now make sure you don't. Great, look at this, look at this. You believe this? Dumbass ball. I don't know, maybe I'm the dumbass. It goes both ways, really. Okay, now. There we go. Now we're touching. Just make sure you don't touch your damper body. And squeeze. Why is he doing that? I don't get why he's doing this. It is so odd. Okay. Right there. And squeeze them in all the way and done that was an odd one oh well stuff happens i guess now we're going to install the shock mounting hardware so these were his old i guess bushings i'm going to give him new ones over here because well i have no idea what condition those are in i mean they look somewhat worn to be honest in reality is this guy was flopping around there real easy so we're gonna put two new ones in there. These are easy enough. Just make sure it's clean inside. Yeah. Crying out loud. All right. Now, one thing about these I guess bushings, you don't need lube on these guys. Technically, these are self-lubricating. All right. So what we're gonna do is put one side in here. Well, let me open this a little bit easier. Make my life a little bit easier. Sink them in. Put them at the base. Close them up. Make sure he's even. Squish one in. Boom. Now we are going to squish the other one in. Is that enough? It's not going to be enough. I bet you. Be... Oh, close, close, close. Hey. Make sure he's even. Tilt him to make sure he's as even as possible, right? There we go. Sack one's in. Ooh. Now we put in the axle. Could I do this one by hand? Nope. See, before I was able to easily move them out by hand. There should be some resistance in here. So he shouldn't just flop around in there. So let's put this guy in like this first. It's not going to go in all the way. But we will get him mostly in there. All right. Now we have actually... Where's my tool? All right. Here's my tool. Please tell me. Please tell me I'll be able to sink them in by hand. 
Uh, but now I got to get my 13. Let's try and hold them down like on this side with your fingers. Yeah, that's feeling more normal, that's for sure. Okay. Crack this guy a bit and make my life easier. Now, throw this on the side, get all this on the side. Now let's take our O-rings. O-rings sit inside the bushing, the edge of the axle. One. There's two. Now this guy's got flat side and a bumpy side. The flat side goes down. Now this isn't going to be perfect, but we are going to make it perfect. Again, flat side goes down. All right, now we're going to put them in here. There we go. Let's spray them down with alcohol and get all the old grease off of them, or old grease, any extra unwanted grease off of them, or else it's just going to collect on them on your first ride really bad. Try and get behind here. Make sure you get all over the dials. Boy, those dials feel great. I mean, they feel really good, guys. For real. That is so much better than before. Holy cow. Okay. And... Ta-da! And that's it, folks. You just fully serviced a 2022 Fox Float DPS Factory Series Evol Rear Shock. This is actually an easy job, guys. Once you get used to it, the only pain in the butt is if you're going to use a hand pump and a syringe to fill up the IFP, okay? Outside of that, there's really nothing hard to, about it. Again, when it comes to the Teflon ring on the piston, unless you absolutely need to change it, don't change it. Don't even bother. It's just going to make your life a lot easier, all right? Now, let's not forget the sag ring that popped out. I cleaned it. Put that on there. Next, you're going to put your dials back to where they were. You're going to fill it up with air. Don't forget your air cap. And then make sure after your first few rides, four, five, six rides, just to keep the damper body clean. Some excess oil is going to want to come out. You don't want too much dirt to collect to make the wiper's job harder. All right. So if you like this video, please click the like button, guys. It would be super appreciated. Click the subscribe button to get to see more videos. Click the bell button, bing, 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 in order to get notified when new videos get released. And until then, I hope all is well with all of you, and we will be talking to you soon. All right, take care. Have a good one. Bye.